Alright guys, so, you guys have already seen this system here, the Growlot. Uh, part of the reason that I uh, landed on this is because I reviewed them for a long time. And uh, I was actually introduced to, to them because of the MPP Solar, if you've seen those. Um, the guy that I called to talk to about this it was actually Ian over at Watts 24-7 back in the day when I first started uh, diving into all of this stuff. And I was telling him what I was looking for because we were putting solar on our houseboat. So uh, I will probably tie in some pictures here of the solar on our houseboat when we first set it up. Uh, we've had that system in operation for a year and there is a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Um, there was a lot of things that we could have and probably should have done to make the system, uh, I don't want to be offensive, but idiot proof so that we can't get screwed up. But between time and money, we ran out of, uh, of time and money, more specifically the time. I think we still had a little bit left in the budget to do the last few things that we wanted to. Um, but we just didn't have the time before it was time to launch the boat. So we launched the boat with a working system, but with some flaws. I'll dive into that later. Uh, but that leads to this video here. Now, what you are looking at are these Bolt Ultra 150 amp hour. They're uh, silicate salt batteries. It's kind of hard to see. Things are super heavy. So, the silicate salt battery. This is um, actually really awesome technology. Uh, these are kind of like a cross halfway between like lithium and AGMs. They have very similar charge characteristics to the AGMs. However, uh, they are also similar to the lithium in the sense of you can use a much deeper depth of discharge of these batteries uh, without any issues. AGMs, I mean, depending on quality and use and, and many different factors, depth of discharge, you're one to three years. Maybe you can squeeze five years out of AGMs before you're really just, you know, skimming the last little bit of capacity these batteries are supposed to be like three year minimum uh, up to 10 to 15 years if you use them properly um, those you can only get like 50% depth of discharge before you're worried about doing damage uh, I'll have to check the spec sheets I think the silicate salt batteries in general you can take them down to 80% depth of discharge without damage, but don't quote me. Um, in fact, you're supposed to be able to take these all the way down to zero, as long as you don't leave it there. If you take it down to zero, you know, obviously that's not the intention, right? But you take it down to zero and you instantly start charging it back up, you're supposed to be able to do that without damaging them. Um, so here is the true test of these things here. Um, we got, uh, five of these for our houseboat, 24 volt system, identical to the one I just showed you, uh, two sets of two in parallel. So 24 volts, two banks of two batteries, and then one battery was the houseboat battery. So that ran... All of the 12 volt accessories, the lights, the pumps, everything uh, in the houseboat. The problem turned out to be when we had um, one of the other owners on the houseboat change some of the charge settings on the solar system. We won't get into it, but long and short of it, he took the wrong steps. And from that point until uh, about Four and a half months later, these things never even made it back to like 50% charge unless it was through solar only. Um, 
and I mean, what I mean is like no one was on the boat for a couple days and the solar system was able to fully recharge them because they were just continuously being used and run at about 50% depth of discharge for about six months. So yeah, these things <laughs> have probably been the literal definition of the worst possible management that they could have had. Um, unfortunately, uh, the time that we had scheduled for us to be on the houseboat when I could get back on and actually adjust the settings back to what they should have been, um, they had already spent four months at like 50% depth of discharge. Well, that probably would have sufficed without a problem, except we had DC to DC converters to go from the 24 volts to charge the 12 volts. And um, there was a slight oversight on one of those 12 volt products, that being the fridge. The refrigerator on our houseboat is 12 volts and it works beautifully. However, especially in the heat of the summer, that is pretty much running nonstop. So one of the trips out, the batteries got run down really low a storm was rolling in so we didn't have any good solar and it was at the end of the day um, and so came to the end of the day uh, low voltage and then went into the night and the batteries were already at the low voltage cutoff for that grow watt to even wake up um, so they were too low for the grow watt to even recognize the batteries connected uh, and then I, not specifically this battery, but the houseboat battery, the one separate from the, the two sets of two, that one battery was running the fridge. And anything else that may have got left on, I think everything else was off. Ex oh no, the big problem was when everything got left on. Um, so this was running a pump that accidentally got left on that the pressure switch went out on so it didn't shut off on its own, it just ran and the fridge and so this thing was just had a continuous like 10 amp draw on it non-stop so overnight batteries that are just barely above the minimum cutoff voltage for the solar system are on a dc to dc converter that's charging this battery that has a continuous 10 amp draw all night long and then the next morning even if there was enough voltage in there for the grow watt over there to, not that one, that one's mine, but the one on the houseboat, uh, if there was enough voltage in the bank of batteries to wake that up, there was almost no sun uh, because it was a really, really cloudy, stormy day and there was no one on the boat for a few days after that because of the, the weather, actually. Um, so we, in turn, had one battery that was powering two de devices specifically for two to three days uh, before the first person got on and that one battery killed all five of them just completely just decimated them ever since then we've had multiple problems I hadn't had a chance to get back on the boat until just recently well I just got on the boat and while on the boat um, I ran our system off of just two of these which we thought these were pretty beat up and in bad condition we will see because I expected to have virtually no power out of them because the, the one um, did not test very well um, on just an amperage tester but I turned out to be really surprised because I plugged them into the solar system after seeing that uh, they were hooked up incorrectly from the person before me. And we used the generator a lot that first day as I was getting set up and we were, you know, cooking and whatever else. Um, but then we just spent a week on that houseboat with those two batteries when before we had four. And granted, it wasn't as hot. We didn't have to run the air conditioner almost at all, but we were able to run the microwave and, um, plug in skillets and all kinds of stuff with no issues for a whole week. 
So, that leads me to believe that these batteries might not be in as bad a condition as we initially thought because the one pulled the bat uh, amperage draw. Uh, that one right there, I believe, was the one that we thought was bad. It looks like um, one of the other houseboat owners put an NG on it for no good. Um, but we'll find out because uh, I am going to charge them up full. Right now they're just on a trickle charger. Unfortunately, I don't have anything much bigger than that at at the ready. Um, but keeping with the usual, uh, we're actually running from our line energy um, solar charger. And this guy is running battery chargers um, for our batteries here. And that guy is being, because we have horrible cloudy weather today. It's actually uh, about 37 degrees right now. So it's nice and cold. Um, so right now this guy is actually getting most of its solar energy from this battery bank right now that's being charged by my um, 500 watts and Trina solar cells out back laying on the ground. So this is not quite producing enough energy with those. 500 watts in panels to maintain that uh, so my voltage is slowly dropping and I'm just about to cut it out here um, but we'll play with it uh, over the next week or two I'm guessing um, we'll get these charged up I say that because last time I had two of these flat I charged them up and and they were very dead and it it took probably close to two weeks to get them charged back up with my trickle chargers so we'll see how these go uh, but these are ultimately the batteries I would love in my home um, system where I'm not worried about uh, mobility or weight um, so that that should be a beautiful test to start playing with that guy over there and you can see right behind it I've got my line energy batteries those are actually because we only had two of these on the houseboat I took one of those and plugged it into the houseboat battery and this is actually kind of how I figured out what was going on with that DC to DC converter because I didn't even hook up the DC to DC converter because of our voltage issues um, I just took a, a battery charger that we had on board it was a 10 amp charger instead of my 3 amp trickle charger and I plugged it in through the solar system so the only time that the houseboat battery could pull power from the solar batteries is when I had the grow watt turned on otherwise nothing could drain power from those so we could not get stranded without power and have to put jumper cables on them and all that nightmare situation that you don't want to deal with when you're playing with off-grid stuff right well um a 10 amp charger barely kept up with just regular use. That's, you know, running sinks, water, uh, washing hands, toilets, uh, shower. We didn't even use the water slide on the boat, so we really didn't even use as much power as we probably would have otherwise. Um, and the 10 amp charger barely kept up. so. We will be redesigning that, and I'll probably share a lot of that with you guys, too, because uh, uh, it might be helpful, beneficial, or, or spark an idea in whatever system or whatever you're doing, because a lot of that stuff should apply to, like, a, a RV or travel trailer s uh, system or setup if you want something super um, simple and idiot-proof. So... I will slowly uh, keep you guys updated and uh, produce videos as I'm working with these. These, uh, This is just kind of a teaser. I think uh, it's going to be a little while before I'm in a position to do anything with these, mostly just because of the charge time. I think it's going to take a little while to get them charged up. So right now, I'm just going to charge them with my solar um, and try to maximize my use of uh, free energy uh, for 
any of you physicists, I know nothing is free, but free cost-wise to me. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll update you as we go and let you know how things turn out. All right, till next time. See you guys.